I gotta tell you, that new trailer for Mission Impossible looks so weak. The one with the helicopter? Nice. So much crazy shit. Cannot you... fucking wait. Did you guys watch the BTS of him learning how to fly a helicopter? Oh, that was the one I saw. Tom Cruise spent a year learning the stunt because last time he had to do a stunt where he's hanging on to the edge of a plane. Yeah. And so they were like, they do up the ante every single year and he spent a year. Yep. You know what they're gonna do in Mission Impossible 7? What? He's gotta build a helicopter. <laughs> he will be the helicopter. That's really boring. <laughs> he has to spin his hands so fast. fast. Mission Impossible might be my favorite franchise. More than James Bond. Well, it's just Bond, yeah. It's Bond James. except he doesn't fuck. We do not have time to talk about Mission Impossible, and I know this from looking at my Vincero watch. <laughs> nice! <laughs> okay, we'll which... save the ad read for the end, though, <laughs> yeah, but I yeah, appreciate yeah, yeah. that toss-out. No they problem. definitely <laughs> did sponsor this episode. We got our Vincero watches on right now, um, so we'll be checking to see if the time is possible. Our right, first question this week actually comes from me. Matt Peak. did you know I went to Disneyland and got you a present? Yeah. Put it on! Oh, put it on, oh, look Matt! At that. Yeah! <laughs> put it on! Put it on. <laughs> Come Put on, it Matt. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Bruce, you want to get in here? Oh, yeah, hop on get in. in here. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room on the bang bus. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? <laughs> Buckle in, Bruce. Go! Oh, your yeah. first question this week comes real pack. Have you made any fashion? Choices in your past that looking back on makes you cringe. I'm gonna say it's it's not what I have done, but what I haven't done, which is wear more Looney Tunes oversized t-shirts. <laughs> I need to do more of that. I need to do more of that. It's coming that's, back in style. Yeah, that's a faux pas on my part. I can confidently say that I have never made a fashion faux pas, including my wallet chain that I wore for years, my corduroy shorts, and including my uh, ska band shirts that I also wore probably up until I was about 27 years old. Pretty oh, cool. are you 27 years old now? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. <laughs> I mostly just live a life of regrets. My ears are cold, my head's not covered. I'm a big fan of the color orange and little bear ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. Anyone else have any fashion faux pas? Uh, I think at one time I was trying to buy Jinkos and I couldn't afford them. They just went out of business. Well, I know, finally. Now they're, now they're collector's items. Oh. Matt Peake, what about you? Any fashion faux pas? Emphasis on the pause. No, no. No, I, I was going to say Jinkos, actually. Yeah. You got Jinkos too? Oh, yeah. Nice. The, the, the baggy pants face. Were you a phase. goth? Were you guys ravers? No, I was not a goth. I didn't know what I was. I just. Wanted to be cool like my friends. You just wanted to fit in the bottom of their jeans. Next question from Zapata is a cool kid. You're given unlimited funds in a sabbatical funhouse just to focus on training in any Olympic event you choose. Which event do you each train for? Uh, I train Olympic helicopter piloting. Mm -hmm. I have a hero of mine. Mm -hmm. He's taught me a lot through life. Jason Statham? Yeah, I'm, of course I'm referring to Jason Statham. Thank you. Not a lot of people know this. Jason Statham actually uh, is the understudy for Tom Cruise because he's a better pilot than Tom Cruise. Whoa. No. It's true. In every step of my life, I think, how can this make me closer to Jason Statham? Surely you've noticed that I'm, I'm slowly uh, getting six-pack implants, uh, changing my accent, getting a little more cockney, if you will. I hear it. I hear it. Anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip that helicopter. I'm going to be the first one to do it. Barrel. All right, not an Olympic event. Um, I just want to do what's the one with the b big ball on the end of a chain and you spin a bunch? Shot put? Uh, that's probably like chain chomp sport. I want to do that. I want to do that one because I think it. I think the fact that they start spinning, lose control, and then just spiral and then have to toss something really Tom far. Tom Cruise did that with a helicopter once. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, he, he survived it. it. Yeah. I probably do Trojan horse event. Uh, where you train to fit inside the horse to be wheeled in for a secret sabotage. Mm. Um, most of it would just be me establishing relationships with people so that way they don't forget that I'm in the horse and then I starve and die. I'll throw it out. What happened to it? Where's Elise? Where'd she go? <laughs> Ask Odysseus. Anyone else want to burn this big wooden no. horse? <laughs> no! Well, have this useless horse and it's really cold outside. Let's stop praying to it and burn it down. I've always wanted to train for a pole vault only because, have you guys seen that gif of the person does the pole vault and then it hooks their dick yeah. on the way over the bar when they're jumping it. It looks like it hurts so much and I want to be I want to be forever memorialized as that gif on the internet. Uh, I'd like to spend some time training in archery. I think that's a noble sport and that way I can assassinate future presidents. Uh, Matt Peake, mm -hmm. which which Olympic event would you train for? Is wingsuit diving an Olympic event? It should be. Do it. Yeah, that's a it great idea. I'm going to go with that one. Next question from Old Thrace. I am supposed to go on a three hours long car trip with my girlfriend and her family. What are some hot and interesting topics I should discuss with them on this trip? Politics. Hot. Yeah, hot. I was just gonna say yeah, politics. <laughs> good thing about politics is everyone's right. <laughs> It was never a disagreement. Yeah. yeah. It's a good you way to break you. You can always find a middle ground. Yeah, you know what, family? I'd love to talk about this during dinner. Yeah. And I say you segue from that right into, yes. hey, 
Look at these crazy sounds I can make with my ass while I'm farting. Mm. But oh. you're gonna want the acoustics to be right, so ask everyone to roll up the windows first, and then you just squeeze out the longest one you possibly can. For a little pro tip, people won't see it coming. Stock up on like gas station burritos and some bran. Uh, just get all that stuff when you're setting out, and then about an hour in, you're loaded and ready to go. I was thinking maybe a sing-along, but you do, you find the sing-alongs like Marilyn Manson or Nine Inch Nails and things like that, that they'll probably know. I wanna fuck you like an animal, a prodigy, you gotta, you get good sing-alongs, I feel like everybody would, would, would bond while you're singing those. It's a no-brainer, talk about Funhouse. Okay, because we're up and coming. Yeah, you're right. We've only been around for three years. PewDiePie knows us. Twice yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys do actually before the car ride, watch the Flintstones movie mm. from the mid 90s. <laughs> Problem with that movie right. is at the very end, A, Fred makes a really weird decision where he asks for his old job back after his boss, Mr. Slate, says, We're moving to concrete. He can't get his old job back because they're moving to concrete. His old job was working in the old world. Shortly thereafter, it cuts them at the drive-in watching the movie that you just watched. Are they in the movie that they watched? Or is the is the movie a movie in this world? Adam, we, we discussed this. We said we wouldn't bring up the Flintstones movie again. This is me in the car ride with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> what a stunt. Matt Peak, how are you going to finger your girlfriend without her parents seeing? Yeah, would you try to make yeah. out with her while you while in the back seat? They're pleather seats, Matt. It'll wash right off. And you can sniff your fingers you afterwards. <laughs> you could just do a uh, in-depth research project on the geographical area you'll be driving through. And her then vagina. talk about that. But the problem is, is if the driver falls asleep and everybody else falls asleep, the car will go off the road and nobody will die. <laughs> Goddamn greasy wheel! <laughs> <laughs> Planet farthest from... Is that supposed to be furthest? Who knows? Uh, your videos have been making me laugh for many years now, and some of the most interesting ones are when you collaborate with other people outside the Funhouse family, like the Vidoes with Rahul. Are there any people, or groups of people, you want to or are working on doing a video with? I have thought many, many a time about getting in the one, the only, George Lucas. Wow, and We wow. bring him in, and then we do a commentary on Star Wars Episode One, and ask him what he was thinking. Why? Did he have Boss Nasco? Why did he do it more? And, and, and why did he make the Gungans seem like uh, racial stereotypes of black people? Why did he make Watto seem like a racial stereotype of Jewish people? Why did he make the Neomorians racial stereotype of Asian people? Because it's funny. Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? <laughs> why? Good why? Guess. why? Why? I think it'd be funny to do a collaboration with Barack Obama. Ooh. He's not as busy anymore, yeah, you, you know? Right. And he could say whatever he wants to. So he'd come in, we'd show him some Rule 34 and stuff, and he'd probably have a good laugh. I'd love to bring in the director of the Flintstones film, because I have a lot of questions for him. Who is that director? Do you know? <laughs> it's that bird that says it's a living. It's probably like, like, <laughs> it's probably like Stony Rockworth or whatever. <laughs> There's one thing I pride Funhouse on is that we inspire. Uh -huh. But I think we need to pass it on to the next generation. So we bring in Tom Cruise. We get him lit up about making comedy gameplays. Oh. And he'll do, he'll do it better than us in like a week and then twist his ankle somehow doing it, even and though we have stuff. Helicopter right out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Recently an article came out, out about uh, kind of the depressing state Brendan Fraser is in. I oh, couldn't bring man. myself to read it, but I think we could revitalize Brendan Fraser's Cheer him career. Up. That's oh. a great idea. Here's the one thing though, that whenever any guest comes in, I have to grab their butt. I'm not sure if he's okay with that. We should probably ask him before he <laughs> Brendan, if you're okay with Bruce grabbing your butt, clap once <laughs> for a yes. Uh, Matt Peake, instead of me, who would you sit next? I always had a, a mild fantasy that would make me look really cool. We'd get uh, Matt Sinreich and Seth Green and the creators of Robot Chicken. Oh, uh, yeah, the guys you worked with. I didn't work. I, I worked on the crew. I didn't, but I didn't do anything. You're on a video with Seth Green. Well, well you know I, when you originally make a series with someone and create it from scratch, you're an executive producer for life. That's why you get all those Emmys. Yeah, I got three of them now. The Solar Sentinel, what does Earth 8 Funhouse look like, and are they still friends with Rahul? I'll tell you about Earth 8. It's a utopia because they beheld something beautiful, and that's me flipping a helicopter. Lawrence thinks he's Tom Cruise on Earth 8. Wearing that's my great. Dragon Ball Silk t-shirt, uh, I flipped that helicopter, and it was just like the aliens landing in Star Trek First Contact. Uh, everybody was like, wars, we don't need them, money don't need it. Let's uh, let's make replicators, and we'll make them all shaped like Lawrence's face, because he's our god. So if Lawrence is Tom Cruise on Earth 8, then that means I get to be Natalie Portman. Attractive, smart, mm -hmm. she's a movie star. She, I think she has a degree from Yale or something. Probably. Right? She, she's in like the Israeli army. She's right? in the Israeli army. Yeah, she, yeah I'm absolutely Natalie Portman. Do you ever flip a helicopter? 
Uh, mine would be a little bit more simple. All my jeans would be light and all my shirts would be dark. Exactly from Jersey Shore. Yeah, but kind of, yeah. <laughs> I think in this alternate earth, uh, our friend Rahul Kohli would have actually gotten to acting a lot earlier. Mm. And oh. he actually would have played a young Bam Bam instead of whatever kid they <laughs> cast in that film. He would have been great movie. in that movie. I know, and he'd be much more famous. I would have asked a lot of uncomfortable questions about the parentage in Flintstones, though. Rick Moranis plus Rosie O'Donnell equals Raul Kohli. <laughs> what other questions do you need? Well, in Earth 8, you guys are still friends with Rahul, but you are also at odds with him because Ooh. Elise does not exist. I am Shadow Rahul. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. You are friends with him, but you must also hunt him, which is where Tom Cruise comes into play. That's Ethan right. Hunt. I can surveil from and the air. Yes. Because I'll be able to flip it upside down. You can't see the ground when you're in a helicopter, Bruce. Unless you flip it upside down, then you look straight up. Why is he talking to me about this? Matt Peake. I don't, what's going on in this question? I don't know. <laughs> Good answer. In a parallel universe, what does Funhouse look like, and are we still friends with Rahul? I hope so, and uh, maybe this is like real. Oh, oh, he's got ears. He has actual Ewok ears. Don, please make sure that Photoshop of Matt Peake as an Ewok makes it in. But what does Brendan Fraser think about that? All right, Matt Peake, last question. All right, from Dank Blumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's a good name. Uh, what street food from other countries do you wish was more accessible? Uh, you can get hot dogs, hamburgers. What else? What, what can you not get? I'll tell you what you can't get. What? Mushrooms. Found these on the streets of Amsterdam. They should be available everywhere. You just bolt like two grams of mushrooms and you walk into a brothel. It's fantastic. Go on a wild ride. You get that in uh, Amsterdam tang. Can't get that in a vendor in New York, can you? Wait, can you get street pussy in Amsterdam? Because I'm going to get something to that. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to go through that red light. This <laughs> I want to I eat my way all the way through oh, Amsterdam. Yeah, why is he talking like that? <laughs> Look at the time. <laughs> According to my wonderful Vincero watch, it's time for an ad read. This episode of Open House is brought to you by Vincero Collective Watches. Are you looking to increase your perceived success and wealth without paying a huge price tag? Vincero has a modern and contemporary style that looks bold and professional. Get the watch built for a boss. A luxury watch doesn't have to cost you a fortune, and you'll see why when you check out Vincero. Every watch is manufactured and quality checked by hand before being shipped out to you. This is the kind of attention to detail and dedication to quality typically only seen with luxury watch brands over $500, while Vincero watches start at little over 100 bucks. If you like your watches to stand out but not break the bank, I recommend the Bellwether. It's got a very sporty style, but it doesn't sacrifice on a luxury look. With over 5,000 five-star reviews and a two-year warranty, you can shop with confidence. You have to check them out because I know you'll love their watches just as much as I do. Go to VinceroCollective.com slash openhouse159 and enter the promo code HOUSE, H-A-U-S, to get 15% off your entire order. Don't blend in, stand out. Get a Vincero watch today at VinceroCollective.com slash openhouse159 plus promo code HOUSE. Do you guys have a car seat so I can come sit with you? No. It's in the back. We need to get the booster seat. Here. Hop on my lap. Ew. That's where kids belong in the road. Get me out of here. <laughs> Are you confusing a dumpster with the Hollywood party? By wine and dine, do you mean complain and eat hard boiled eggs? Because that's all I've seen you do at parties. <laughs> it would tear me apart to be blacklisted from the uh, Path of the Jedi build your own lightsaber experience. Oh, after Star Wars. I wanted to do that. I've never done that before. Oh, I do it every weekend, Bruce. Too many children. I go in there, I recite the Jedi Code, I build a new lightsaber 